as we're looking at measuring the power in a weighted voting system, often we're interested not just in when players are critical, but we're interested in when a coalition becomes a winning coalition. As normally some proposal is made and people start to jump on board with the proposal, we're interested in at what moment does the balance tip in favor of passing a resolution. So if the order matters, what happens to power? And that's going to be our question. What happens to power? if order is important. Because really, we don't care about people joining a coalition that's a winning coalition if it's already winning. We just want to know, when does the balance of power tip? At what moment does that happen? And before we can get into how we can measure that, we've got a little bit of vocabulary we have to add to our discussion about power and weighted voting. First, we're going to talk about what's called a sequential coalition. And what a sequential coalition will do is it doesn't just list the players, but it lists the players in the order they join a coalition. And so notationally, we're going to indicate this differently than just a weighted voting system. We're going to use pointy brackets and then list the players in the order they join the coalition. So this means player one jumped on board first, and then player two jumped on board second. It's important to note that that example is different than the sequential coalition player 2, player 1. Because this second one indicates player 2 got on board first with the resolution. Player 1 joined later. So order is important in sequential coalitions. And once we have sequential coalitions, we can talk about finding the player that is called the pivotal player. This is the all-important player in a sequential coalition. That makes a coalition a winning one coalition. Who was it that tipped the balance of power in favor of the winning coalition? It's important to note then that if we're looking for the pivotal player, that there can only be one pivotal player in a coalition. Because after that one has tipped the balance of power, we don't care about any of the others. So a quick example of identifying the pivotal player, if we have a weighted voting system where 8 is needed for quota and 6, 4, 3, 2 are the votes of each of the four players, let's consider the sequential coalition where player 3 is on board first, then player 2, then player 4, and finally player 1 at the end. Well, if that's the case, when player 3 is on board, we just have player 3's three votes. That is not enough to achieve quota. But after player 3, player 2 came on board. So now we have the three votes from player 3, but we also have the four votes from player 2. But you'll notice that's only seven votes. We still do not have enough to reach quota. But in addition to player 3 and player 2, next player 4 jumped on board. 
player four gave two more votes. So now we have the three from player three, the four from player two, and the two votes from player four. That's going to give us nine votes, which is enough to reach quota. So then that player four jumping on board is the pivotal player. Because once player four joined the coalition, now it was a winning coalition. We don't care that player one joined later, or if player one joined at all, it doesn't matter. And so it's very important if you are the pivotal player, you have a lot of power in the weighted voting system. And that's what we're going to attempt to measure, is how much power do you have from a pivotal player standpoint using what's called the shapely Schubic power index. And the process we go through with this power index is first we're going to list all the sequential coalitions. Once they're all list, we will determine all the pivotal players. At what point do each of those coalitions become winning coalitions? And then similar to the Banzoff power index, we're going to count how many times each player is pivotal. And then we will convert this number to a fraction, or a decimal, or a percent by dividing by the total. So let's see if we can do an example where we can see this process unfold. Let's look at the weighted voting system where 36 votes are required for quota. Player 1 gets 20 votes, player 2 17 votes, and player 3 gets 15 votes. First, we need to list all the sequential coalitions. So let's say we go player 1, player 2, player 3 in order. And then let's switch those last two, player 1, player 3, player 2. Then let's put player two first, player one, player three. Then let's switch the order of the last two, player three, player one. And let's give player three a chance to be first with player one, player two afterwards. And then switch the last two, player two, player one. And that's all the different orders that could have been done for the vote. Now that we've listed all the sequential coalitions, we're going to determine the pivotal player. At which point do each of these coalitions become winning coalitions? And so we'll kind of go down the line. Player 1 gave us 20 votes, still not quota. Player 2 gives us 17 more votes, which is 36. Actually, it's 37. Now we've reached quota, so player 2 is the pivotal player in this sequential coalition. In the next one, player 2 gave us 20 votes. Player 3 gave us 15 more votes, which only gave us 35 votes. We still don't have quota at 36 until we add player 2's 17 votes to get us to 52, which is well over quota. Player 2 is, again, the critical player in this coalition. If player 2 comes first, that's 17 votes. 
Then player one, which is 20 votes, which gives us 37. Player one is the pivotal player. In the next coalition, player two gives us 17 votes. Player three gives us 15 votes. Now we're only up to 32. Still not quite to quota until we include player one's 20 votes, which puts us way over. Player one, then, is the pivotal player in this coalition. On our last set, player three gives us 15 votes. Player one gives us 20 votes. We're still only up to 35, short of quota until player two is included. Player two gives us another 17 votes, moving us up to 52. Player two is the pivotal player. On the last one, player three gives us 15 votes. Player two gives us an additional 17 votes. That's 32 votes. Still not enough until we include player one's 20 votes, putting us over the 36, up to 52, actually. Player one is the pivotal player for this coalition. So now that we've determined all the pivotal players, we're going to count how many times each player is pivotal and then convert that to a fraction. So we'll look at player 1, player 2, and player 3. Player 1 was pivotal 1, 2, 3 times. Player 2 is pivotal 1, 2, 3 times. Notice player 3 is never a pivotal player. 0. Turns out player 3 is a dummy in this election, never needed for quota. And then we convert those by dividing by the total of 6. So we'll divide by 6 to get 3 sixths, or 1 half, or 50%. Player 2 dividing by 6 gives us 3 sixths, or 1 half, or 50%. That's a 1 half. Doesn't look like a 2. Player 3 dividing by 6 gives us 0 out of 6, or just 0%. Player 3 has no power in this election. And so we can see that player 1 and player 2 might have a different weight, 20 and 17 votes. But it turns out they have the same amount of power when it comes to building a winning coalition, even though they have different number of votes. So now it's your turn to practice some of these to calculate the shapely shubic power index. First, identifying all the, win all the sequential coalitions, then identifying the pivotal players, and then finding the power based on those.